friend, Shabbat Shalom. It is uh, an honor to be able to speak with you tonight and share some words of Torah and reflection. Many of us have received the warning, mind your own business. Get your nose out of where it does not belong. That happened to me a lot when I was a kid. I am a rabbi. My expertise is Judaism. I have a right and obligation to speak about Judaism and even to critique it. When it comes to other religions, however, I don't have a right to tell them how they should conduct their business or what they should believe. So I want to make clear my remarks are not meant to tell another religion what to do. A public conflict has arisen between the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and President Biden. President Biden, and this is something I deeply admire about him, is a deeply committed Roman Catholic. He grew up in the church. He attends church every week. He speaks of his religious values as his guiding principles. When Biden seeks to inspire or comfort, he turns to his faith. His speeches are woven with reference, references to God, biblical language, or even quoting the Pope. He exudes a message of justice, of healing, of hope, and of good deeds. That all being said, he is a liberal Catholic. As times go on, he has become a supporter of Roe v. Wade, a right of a woman to have an abortion, based on her own private decision making. Now here is the problem for him. Roman Catholicism is anti-choice. It believes that abortion is murder, that it is a sin. A person is not only forbidden to have an abortion, but even advocating for the right to have an abortion is also seen as a violation of church teaching, especially for a politician. Any politician who is pro-choice is a sinner. And President Biden's public affirmation of his Catholicism sends a message, some say, that misrepresents the church's teachings. Communion, receiving the sanctified wine, which is the blood of Jesus, and the wafer, which is the body, which is really the body of Jesus, is the essential act of religious affirmation for a Roman Catholic. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states it. And I want to quote it because I really want to understand from the point of view of the Church, what does this Eucharist, what does this communion mean? It says, the Eucharist is efficacious sign and sublime cause for that communion in a divine life and that unity of the people of God by which the Church is kept in being. It is the culmination both of God's actions sanctifying the world in Christ and the worship men offer Christ through him to the Father in the Holy Spirit. To put it simply, and it's, it really shouldn't be stated simply, but let's just have a way of understanding it. To put it simply, communion, a person becomes one with God. And communion is the instrument of unity for the church. How can the church effectively discipline members of the church who violate fundamental teachings? Denying them communion, denying them the Eucharist. It is a statement that implies they are not worthy in their current state of receiving communion until they undertake a sacrament of penitence, which includes renouncing their sins, and changing their behavior. Last Friday, a week ago, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops 
passed a measure in favor of developing a document articulating a policy of denial of communion to pro-choice politicians. This would support the denial of communion to President Biden and Catholic politicians, such as Speaker of the House Pelosi, who support abortion rights. And Archbishop Naaman of Kansas City, Kansas, has stated, and I quote, because President Biden is Catholic, it presents a unique problem for us. It can create confusion. How can he say he's a devout Catholic and he's doing these things that are contrary to the church's teachings? But there are, of course, objections to that understanding. For some bishops have stated, don't cherry pick sins. There are endless sins that could be used to exclude people from communion. Why focus only on abortion? Second, the Eucharist is being weaponized and deployed as a tool in political warfare. The church wants to change the laws of the United States, which is fine. The Eucharist is not the right modality for change. That's what many Catholic theologians say. Third, the debate could fracture the church. And finally, as Pope Paul made it so clear in Evangelii Godium, the Eucharist is not a prize for the perfect, but a powerful medicine and nourishment for the weak. In other words, the Eucharist is needed by all Catholics who, as human beings, are imperfect. Now, this is an internal debate in the church that we Jews do not have a right to comment on. It's a theological discussion. The position of the church on abortion, again, is beyond our right to challenge. It's their right within their religious community to define things any way they want to. And the church's relationship to its members and members to its church and to the bishops that's completely an internal matter. So why do I discuss it? Because the debate, the debate impacts all religious communities. How so? One of the poisons within a religious community is judgment of others. Friends, at times I have found in Judaism, in my community, in our community, a great deal of judgment. One Jew judges the level of piety of another Jew. It happens especially among denominations or between denominations. Oh, those Reformed Jews, they have watered everything down. Oh, those Orthodox Jews, they are so sectarian. If you do not practice Judaism the way others expect you to do, you are looked, upon, you are looked down upon. It's all over the Jewish world. For a community to be holy, it must be welcoming, accepting, and forgiving. It needs to take us as we are. Certainly a religious community has to, has to stand for something, has to believe in something, has to stand for something, and has to be willing to state with certainty what behaviors and what ideas are consistent with the community. That's self-evident. It can try to persuade another person to change their ways or beliefs. That makes sense as well. That's the role of religious teaching. That's the role of a religious community where people interact and learn from each other. But it must restrain from being punitive. You don't change people by telling them that they are defective or wrong. Certainly as a rabbi, you must listen, teach, lead by example, but get off your high horse. You try to understand how the other person sees the world. To deny people the healing power of community is wrong, is self-destructive and cruel. It pushes people away when they most need to be drawn in. If we believe in a loving and forgiving God, we need to create a loving and forgiving religious community. That is my worry about the direction of the United States 
Conference of Catholic Bishops. They have such a powerful religious tradition that needs to be shared with those who find it compelling and meaningful. And it worries me that they will use religious ritual to impose political views or political discipline. That's not good for any religion. Friends, here is my prayer, that the church will be true to its message by embracing President Biden. If they think that his views are wrong, which is their right, they should try to persuade him, but not to exclude him. That would be, from my vantage point as a religious leader, so painful to him. He needs this church. And my prayer for our community is to be clear and forceful in articulating our beliefs and our values, but loving and forgiving because we are all imperfect. There's no ideal person or perfect Jew. And I believe that Judaism can best help us all to achieve the human growth that all of us seek if we allow people to come into the community and experiencing that Hebrew, that, that healing sense, that healing force in their lives. Shabbat Shalom. We continue page